Good morning, all you cool cats and kittens, Toastmasters, and we don't have any guests. My name's Mark Robleski, and I'm here to share some tips with you about presenting virtually. Now, I found this study online, and I have some tips behind me we're going to cover, but can you believe I'm actually happy a little bit? I'm enjoying this time of separation and isolation. Sounds a little crazy, but it's giving me a chance to do a few things. One, I'm reconnecting and getting closer with my family. Two, I'm getting to catch up on amazing TV shows like The Tiger King. If you haven't seen that, you need to start that show. It is about a man seducing other men with meth and tigers. Definitely a good watch. And three, <laughs> we're getting to present virtually. I wanted to present this to the leadership as something to do a long time ago. There's a skill of presenting in person, and then there's a skill set to presenting online. And we're actually getting to do this. To me, that is completely exciting. And I want to share some tips, both from Stanford EDU, as well as what I've learned on how to present successfully. As you look behind me, I have a list of seven tips. These came from Stanford EDU, best practices. There's actually a list of 10. I shortened it down for brevity. Now, we're going to delay those first two. One and two, we're going to come back to you. At the end, I'm going to teach you how to do slideshows as well. And those two are in there. So let's jump to number three. Be a TV personality. What's that mean? There's a lot to this. Right now, I'm online. You're looking at me. My makeup's done. I'm the best dressed man in the room. And my is That's important. We already know it never hurts to be the best dressed when you're presenting. But your stage... You were never responsible for that before. It was already set for you, whether you were in competition or whether you were at Denny's. You just worked with the stage you were given. Here, you get to choose what your stage is. Rocky was outside last week. Here I am, but you saw me. I've been sitting at my desk. Today, I'm standing at my stand-up desk by my whiteboard, so I can whiteboard with you. And if you look, I've even got some books here. Now, to you guys, this probably doesn't mean much, but they're Cisco Press books. So when I'm presenting to... My Cisco peers or to other people, they'll quickly recognize those. So they were purposely put there to help set the stage and make it interesting. So think what you can do when you're presenting. How can your stage be better? And that's what it means to be a TV personality. Be standing, the next bullet. That's important. When we're sitting, we get into some bad habits. It's very easy to be comfortable. If you notice some of the old pros, as I like to say, since we've gone virtual, they've had a lot more ums, ahs, pauses. And I believe that's because we're sitting down instead of standing. When we stand, we naturally go into that presenter's mode. So if you can, be standing. Be prepared. This is another standard Toastmaster theme, but it's no different and probably even greater in this virtual world. You have the tools to pre-record your presentation. See how it looks online. Last night, I was making sure this chalkboard was visible for my other computer. I did a recording with WebEx, which you guys can sign up for a free account. Or if you don't want WebEx, use QuickTime. Just record yourself. See how it came out. Rewatch it. Be prepared. As pertinent as it is when we're preparing for in-person, even more so when we're doing online presentations. Next, be specific. This one's an interesting one. So normally, be specific and be connected, they almost go together hand in hand. But be specific. When you're doing that, it's much harder for me to connect with you on the other side of the screen. So they recommend from Stanford to use particular terminology. In fact, Carl used both of them earlier today. When he started off, he said, can you hear me? Notice the willing go there. Can you hear me? You, directed feel more connected with that. It's very subtle. Then later on, it came back, and I think his mic cut out or someone jumped in, and he said, can everyone hear me? It's a little more disconnected. So the language we use when we're presenting, even more important. You want the person, I want you on the other side of the screen to feel connected to me. So use pronouns that make people feel connected. And being connected, again, also means eye contact. Eye contact, we already know from Toastmasters, is critical. This was a great tip, and I'm doing it right now. One of the ways to keep that eye contact is to look right at that camera. And to do that, they gave this little tip. So they have you, excuse me, put a picture. This is me and my wife in Italy. And I've taped it to the back of the camera. 
And it's very hard to stare at a camera. It's much easier to stare at an audience. So I'm looking at my lovely wife and myself hanging out in Italy, and it constantly reminds me to look there so that you feel like I'm looking at you. A nice, subtle little tip and a way to keep people connected in this virtual world. Now, I'm going to jump back to those other two bullets, and we're going to go into a little presentation here on the slideshow. So let me get my screen shared here quickly, and bear with me one second. And we're going to take a look at my screen. All right, here it is, my intro slide. Creating an interesting slideshow on what not to do. <laughs> Raise your hand if you think this slide's really fun. <laughs> It's black and white, nothing to it. So instead, maybe try something a little different. Creating an interesting slideshow on what not to do doesn't give you a little more, and it was no more work. PowerPoint selected that image you're seeing there, and I thought it was perfect. Just like on my blackboard here, I wanted to add color. I wanted to add some color to my slideshow. So I grabbed these color pens and dropped it in as a background, and it just instantly is a much more interesting graph. If I put that up on screen, I think you're going to be far more excited to hear what I had to say next than if I showed you that first screen. I don't always use uninteresting slides, but when I do, they have lots of text for my audience to read with lots of bullets and way too much information for any one person to care about. In fact, reading my slides to you is the worst thing you can possibly do, so please stop the insanity. Don't overload your slides with bullets. Don't read us your slides. Don't leave them in black and white. Maybe change it up a little. Keep your slides interesting. Don't use a lot of bullets. Tell a story. I've got this man here. Anyone know who this man is? He was in very famous commercial series. No? He's the most interesting man in the world from the Dos Equis commercials. And why is he here? Because I make you the most interesting slides. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And that's my story. <laughs> Have some fun with this. When you build slides, make them fun. Make them quirky. Make them you. But make them interesting. And so then my next point, I could easily sit here with a boring slide again, listing all the bullets of all these, reiterating everything if I really was using this PowerPoint to teach you all my bullets. I'm gonna give you one more tip or two more tips, I guess, on how to do that. So instead of just listing it out and reading it, again, have some fun. I like images, I'm a storyteller. I think a lot of us are by nature. Put an image up there, tell a story around it. So our first bullet, keep it simple. There's not a lot of words here. I borrow this image. And in building PowerPoint presentations, there's a rule, and it's a little flexible. You'll hear it called the rule of three, or the rule of four, or the rule of five, some even the rule of six. That's getting a little quirky. What it means is no more than three bullets in three words, or four bullets and four words per bullet, or five words, five bullets and five words per bullet. Six is getting a little crazy or getting a little wordy. But the moral of the story, if you are going to use bullets, keep it simple. And besides, as Toastmasters, we've already been taught, people are only going to retain about three things that you actually told them. Out of these seven, I'll be lucky if you take three of these with you. So the rule of three to me is golden. Keep it simple. Keep it to three or four things that you really want to get across to your audience. And lastly, my favorite slide, 10. 10. This is the Marie Kondo tidying up of slides. Right now, you're probably sitting there, what the heck is 10, Mark? 10, 10 ideas to how to survive COVID-19 apocalypse? 10 minutes that I have to listen to you? What is it? It is. It's the last. 10 is 10 minutes that I have to grab your attention and keep it focused on me. That's how long I'm going to have your undivided attention. After that, Stanford says, I'm going to start losing you. So the moral story of 10 is bullet number two. Keep it brief. Get to, sink, get to the point and bring it up. Another little subtle tip you might not have noticed that I did here on this slide. White text on this slide did not show up very good. So I put a little black box underneath it that's somewhat opaque, makes that white pop out. Make sure your slides are legible when they're presented. Again, that goes back to being prepared. So Toastmasters, that's the end of my slideshow. That is the end of my 10 minutes. The moral of the story, let me stop sharing, is, look, this is a unique opportunity we're getting. Take heed to some of these bullets as you're presenting. Pick out the ones that most pertain. Set your stage. Be well-dressed. Keep it short and succinct. Be prepared. But most of all, Toastmasters, you know what I want you to do when you're doing this? 
Have fun. Have some fun. Dire Street. Mr. Toastmaster, back to you. Thank you. <laughs>